Okay, so we can resume and finish discussing the theoretic part about the router, okay? And then uh, uh, try to code a little bit. So, as usual, modify our example, the list of answers, and try to insert the router. And then you will do the same in the lab next week on Tuesday for your example, okay? Before moving on, uh, just remember this thing which I didn't mention before, sorry. Uh, all the links work exactly as with the anchor tag. So it means if they start with slash, they are absolute links, okay? So they are from the root of the web server, slash something. If they don't start with slash, they are relative, so it means from the place where you are navigating from, okay? In your application, probably, you can use uh, absolute uh, links and it, it's fine. Because remember, these are not uh, real links in terms of URLs uh, from coming from a server. These are just mappings inside your client application. So something that is completely contained inside your client application. And so mm, it just your application, your URL space of your application, and so you have everything available since slash, okay? And it's up to you to decide how to organize your application, okay? Good. We, uh, we saw link. There is also a special uh, link tag, which is called navlink, which is exactly the same as link, but with a very important difference. I mean, convenient, actually, not really important, but convenient difference. It means that if it detects that the link uh, value, so the path that you put into link, is the one of the active URL, it adds an active uh, string to the class name, okay, to the class. So in short, you can personalize the appearance of the link the automatically depending on which URL is currently displayed in your application. Okay, it's just convenience. Otherwise, you can do it uh, yourself uh, by means of your code. Okay, you put some background or whatever inside of using the CSS. That's fine. I mean, you can do it conditionally on uh, on the basis of some some variable of mm, that you define in your code. It's, it's still fine. But sometimes it's convenient. Like you have a, uh, I, I mean, a selection. Like in the lab, you have uh, the filter list and you have uh, you will be asked uh, to create uh, a different URL for each filter and so if the URL is the one of the current filter that filter may appear active so means uh, with colored background and so on and this can be done automatically if you use nav link instead of the link okay very very simple and very convenient you can also use code and so on, but I mean, uh, this is stuff that you can uh, look at yourself uh, without, uh, you know, too many explanations. It just needs to be tested, okay? Um, okay. Dynamic routes, these are important because uh, you already saw that uh, uh, we had, uh, previously we had uh, users uh, colon user ID, okay? This section of the URL, URL is dynamic. So uh, what, what does dynamic mean? It's a portion of the URL can, that can match any string, okay? And the way in which you, we indicate this fact to the React router is uh, the colon before the name, okay? And the name is actually a, a, a name that we will use uh, with this hook, use params that can extract uh, for us the information from the URL. So you have post slash, I don't know, one, two, three, four, a number, an ID, whatever, a string, post, uh, post one, post two, post three, post four, whatever, okay? And this ID will only match this portion of the URL and it will ex be extracted in the form of a string. Remember, it's always a string because it's a URL. Even it looks like a number, but this is always a string. And so this ID will be, can be extracted automatically by using the useParams hook coming from the React router. 
And in short, use params gives you an object where there are many properties, uh, and each property maps to one of the dynamic element of the URL, okay? So in this case, there will be just one property in the object with, uh, whose name is ID, and the value is actually what is written here after slash post, okay? One, two, three, four, or whatever, okay? So it's what is appearing currently in the URL box or field of the browser. But not the whole URL, but just the dynamic part. And it's dynamic, and we know it because there's this colon before the name, okay? So, uh, when we specify the root, we need to specify it with this syntax, with the colon. And when we would like to use it, we simply use, call use params, which looks at the URL, it knows which is the path that corresponds to the route that is currently shown, and it automatically extracts for us the value that corresponds to that part of the URL, okay? So it's more complex to say than to use it, okay? You just use the use param, you know the name that you put here, and you get the value, that's all. Okay. Um, yeah, children routes inherit all params from the parent routes. So you can have more than one parametric element in the route, and everything is inherited by the children routes. So it means that in a, in a component, you can extract all the parametric parts of the URL through one single call to use params, okay? In case you have more than one. In very simple cases, you just have one, but you might have two, three, and so on. Like, uh, I don't know. Courses, uh, the code of this course, uh, students, uh, the idea of the student, okay? So you have two ideas, like the idea of the course and the idea of the student, okay? Two parametric parts, and you can extract both of them using uh, the use a single code to use param. Okay, like uh, uh, invoices, uh, colon invoice ID, matches uh, your like this, invoices slash anything, not just numbers, okay? Anything until the next slash, if it's not present, it matches everything. And uh, invoice can be retrieved uh, with this syntax, with the use params, okay? Params is an object, so it has a field or, or, or a property invoice ID, okay? So it's easy to use. You can even pass a state uh, among pages. I mean, state for state, we mean information here, basically an object. Okay, it's not a React state, just the information that we would like to pass from one page to another page in our application, okay? This actually takes advantage of uh, an attribute which is present in the browser object model, so it's standard of the browser, not from React. Uh, it's not very, I mean, I, I don't recommend to use it, uh, you, you can use it if you like, but uh, I mean, the passing is sort of passing hidden information from one, from one page to another page, okay? The explicit information is what you write inside the, in the, the value of the URL, so the path. That's really explicit because you can look at the, the information. But maybe sometimes you need to uh, pass more information, more complex information, objects and stuff like that. Uh, it might be convenient to pass uh, the information in this way. Because the only other option is to create a state, a React state in your application just for this purpose. Actually, it's exactly the same as we did in our application when uh, we wanted to edit something. We edit uh, an object, and the object to edit was, uh, was set into a state in app. Right, so the object to edit uh, was no, in main, okay. Was this answer, the third element. This is a React state, okay. And uh, this is more or less the same that uh, replaces uh, this uh, state because when you need to pass complex information, you cannot just, you know, put it into the URL. You should encode it and, you know, do, do, a lot of things if you would like to put in the URL, and then it shows up in the URL. 
and maybe you don't even want to sh show it in the URL, okay? Not for security, but just for convenience because the URL becomes uh, complex and in incorporates information that maybe you don't want to show because if people would like to bo um, bookmark your link, it's useless to bookmark that part and so on, okay? So you have this option that I, um, that, uh, I mean, it, it's possible to use. It's also not so complex to use, but I will not show it uh, in the example, okay? Just because, uh, I mean, uh, it's not really so essential. Many, in many, many occasions, uh, if you design good URLs, you can uh, leave this information out of your application. I mean, you don't need to pass this information. We will see it, how to design the URLs in our toy example with the answer list. And instead of passing the answer object to the edit form, we will pass the ID and we will put the ID in the URL and that's enough for us, okay? So we don't have to pass the whole object as we do now with the uh, React state, okay? But anyway, to use this uh, uh, functionality is uh, somehow easy. There's an additional attribute to the, uh, for the link uh, uh, component, and there's uh, an additional parameter, optional parameter for navigate, uh, that is an object where you can set the state property and this will be preserved uh, when you receive, uh, um, I mean, you can retrieve uh, the information through this uh, use location hook and access it through dot state, okay? Just beware that uh, passing complex object not always work because the object gets serialized like JSON style, Okay, and so you cannot, uh, let's say, put a DJS object inside this stuff because it will not get uh, serialized correctly. So you need basically to pass uh, things like uh, strings, numbers, uh, booleans, and so on. Even complex objects are fine, so nested objects are fine, but uh, not uh, objects that uh, you cannot, uh, you, uh, that, um, that don't have a way to serialize well. Okay, so to be transformed into strings in short. Okay. Um, last thing is that uh, sometimes you might have uh, um, more complex URLs. You already encountered these uh, URLs, uh, I think when you designed the API, uh, the server APIs. Uh, some of you have uh, thought about, uh, you know, designing URLs in this form. So with the question mark and with a set of uh, um, um, couples uh, key attributes uh, that uh, define uh, what the URL should uh, show, okay? Uh, in this case, remember, this is not the server side. This is, everything is client side. It's just another way to store information in the URL and I mention it, it, I'm mentioning it because it's, uh, it can be accessed easily with another hook, the third hook that we see today, this use search params, okay? That basically breaks everything on the hand, and, uh, and then it takes the couple, it breaks on the equal sign, and it gives you an object where you have all the keys with all the values available in the form of uh, an, uh, um, an object, okay? So uh, you can use the search param um, to get the information and you can use the set search params to create this URL, okay? So this, uh, let's say hook, okay? Actually, it's just a function. I mean, it's not a state, okay? It's just, a, we, we call it hook because they decided to, to, to implement like, uh, them like hooks, but I mean, since they don't have a state, I mean, they're basically functions available with the router. And uh, they return two values, so, so this search param where you can access the fields in this way, and the set search param, this is a function where you pass an object and it creates this string. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to create these strings because if you have an end inside the value or inside the key and so on, what do you do? You should escape it and it's more and more code that you should write. So if you use the functions which are already 
uh, ready for your purpose, uh, they, it's better, okay? So this is the summary and then we will start coding. We would like to use the router for our application, fine. We of course import the package and then wrap everything in a browser router and then we use uh, routes and route to define the routers. If we would like to have a layout, uh, remember that we need to have this outlet uh, component uh, somewhere in the layout. So the layout is the top uh, root uh, and then uh, we have the rest uh, as outlet. And then when you need to navigate, you need to either use a link or nav link, if you would like to highlight it automatically, and then use navigate. Or there is, uh, the, there is also a component, navigate, that if rendered by React, it basically stops uh, the rendering and uh, it takes you to the new route. Sometimes it's useful because you need to uh, automatically navigate to a new place and you discover it while uh, uh, writing the components returned by your uh, um, uh, component. Okay, so in the component tree, in the return statement, at a certain point you do some tests and you say, well, in this case I should navigate to another place. You put a navigate component and basically React understand that this stuff should not be rendered and you should navigate to another place, okay? And instead, if you are writing an event, uh, an event handler, uh, you can use, the, use navigate, it gives you a function to call, okay? And then there are these uh, three hooks uh, that basically helps you to um, uh, handle this uh, um, dynamic uh, URLs, use params, the search params uh, for the stuff after the question mark, and the location to retrieve the state that you set when you uh, navigate to another place and you use the state, okay? Otherwise you can simply ignore this uh, state. Okay, it's typically not set. Okay, so let's go back to our application. We have uh, a bit less than uh, one hour, but we should be able to finish. In any case, I will publish the, the whole uh, uh, solution after the lecture. And so I'm starting from uh, an application that, uh, uh, yes, that is the one that we left the last time on Monday. Okay, uh, so we have the form, the add form, and the edit form, okay? Uh, cancel, make the form disappear, and so on, and we have, as we saw before, two states, in up, actually not in up, in main, which is uh, immediately below uh, up. So show form and the edit object, okay? So these two states now will disappear because I would like to implement them in the form of uh, uh, URLs inside my client application, okay? So on the client side with the route. So show form or not show form? Well, basically, let me write something, okay? So routes. Uh, well, we always have the route uh, that corresponds uh, to um, initial page, okay? And the initial page could be list of answers for us, okay? And that's fine. I mean, this is what we already have. No need for the route. But then if we need a second uh, URL, so a, a, a second route, well, we need the route, okay? But first, Think which route you should need, okay? Well, we have uh, various options in our application. One is show the add form. So let's create a, a, a route for this case. We would like to show the add form, okay? It's a different route. It's a different state of the application. We are adding something. We're not just listing something, okay? So give a, a, a reasonable name, slash add. Okay, show the form need, uh, needed to add a new answer. New answer, okay? And then, well, we could stop here, I mean, uh, but uh, since we are thinking in terms of routes, 
Okay, let's finish the work since it's just one additional uh, route. Okay, and then for editing, well, we could recycle the same route, but uh, uh, um, route, but uh, I mean, then uh, how how do we know which uh, answer we should edit? Well, uh, yeah, that's the object, right? <laughs> Uh, the, the, the object here, so the state. Still okay, okay? But, since we would like to practice a little bit with the routes, I suggest you to try to implement an edit route, okay? And in, in this edit route, we can experiment with the dynamic portion of the route, so with the parametric route, okay? Like uh, ID, and let me use the same syntax, uh, colon ID, Okay, to say that the portion of the route is variable. And this would be the ID or the answer that we would like to edit. Okay? So, edit uh, the answer. So, show the form. The form. To edit the answer with, uh, with uh, the ID equal to, no, with the, with the, uh, with the identified by by ID, okay? That's uh, the idea of how to transform our application, which is now a single page application in the sense that it is one page, okay? A, a single page application that has three pages, three views, okay? And now we should decide what to show in each view, okay? So uh, I just saved that this is just comment, okay? So, how, uh, yes, yes, no, no, there will be a readme file with a given structure for the exam, and you will have to fill up this uh, readme file, okay? It's more or less like the readme file that we have uh, here, okay? But, uh, I mean, instead of having this stuff, which is uh, generated by Vite, uh, we will give you a structure to fill up, like, uh, uh, name, first name, last name, uh, ID number, and so on, and then uh, routes, and then uh, uh, API, server APIs, and then uh, tables uh, on the server, and stuff like that, okay? Um, okay. If you're just curious, uh, you can uh, look uh, at last year's uh, exams, okay? Actually, it's better not to look at the exams, but at the page of the course, and uh, look at the examples that we provided in the end of the course, which are full examples with also the readme file, if I remember correctly, okay? So you have a look at those uh, um, examples. But we will, we will uh, show you these examples before, uh, of course, the exam, and we will give you more information about this. Okay. This is just uh, um, because I don't have a, a piece of paper where I can write, I mean, uh, uh, the setup will be too complex. So I just write here so I can also save it and share it with you with the, with the code, okay? So I just put some comments here. Okay, so how do we transform this stuff for using the router? Well, first of all, stop the application, install the router. npm install react router DOM. Okay, of course you need a network connection to download the package. And then you import the stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, import um, from React root router DOM. Okay. What do we import? Well, let's uh, import the basic stuff, and then, as needed, we will fill up this stuff. Browser router for sure. Routes and route, that's a minimum, okay? This is needed to define a browser router and the routes and the route, the single routes, okay? And then the rest uh, will be used, uh, will be added when we need it, okay? So, up, well, up basically in an application that has routes, just contain the routes. That's the simplest way to approach the problem, okay? Uh, yes. So in short, 
we, we will move this stuff, uh, container, etc., in another place, okay, below, uh, I mean, later, uh, we, we will decide where to put it. And uh, we, we start with the browser route, okay? Let me do a bit of copy and paste just in the interest of time. Uh, so, let's start with the first stuff, okay? Um, no, let me copy everything so it's easier. Um, okay, everything so big is always a bit messy. Okay, uh, the error is because uh, we should have a fragment. Okay, but uh, I mean we don't want to have the fragment. We would like to close here, right? So let's close it. Okay. And the rest will be put into another function. Function, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, don't know, okay? Uh, I, I will change it later, okay? Props. Uh, it will be clear once uh, we finish. I mean, before we finish. Return, okay? This stuff. Okay. So in short, we open a browser router, we open routes. This is always the same, nothing to invent here, okay? And then we need to decide, do we want to have nested routes or not? I propose you a solution with nested routes just, just because it's, uh, uh, let's say, more, uh, it's closer to what you are going to do in the lab. And we also use this outlet component, which sometimes creates a bit of uh, uncertainty, okay? But, uh, I mean, we could uh, write things like uh, root slash element uh, table, okay? And then root, uh, root uh, path uh, add uh, element uh, um, form. I'm just guessing, you know, component names, uh, they, are, they are do not exist at the moment, okay? And if we do like this, we should uh, close, okay? And then close with the routes and browser router, okay? And this is, this is a valid strategy, okay? D don't, don't mind about, uh, you know, the underlined, the red underlined uh, stuff. Uh, but, um, I mean, this is a way to define routes, okay? They are not nested, they still work. What's the problem, I mean, what's the issue in this case? Not a really a problem. Is that when you, when you uh, return the components for table and for form, if you have common elements, you should copy and paste stuff or remember to put these common elements in both components. Like in the lab, you have this uh, filter uh, selection on the left, and you should, you know, remember to put this filter selection in all places, okay, in all components. That's why uh, it's convenient to use these uh, uh, nested routes because I can define a layout. Uh, here the layout is very simple. Uh, it, it's uh, just uh, this, uh, you know, this top part, which I would like to keep, okay? Let's keep the top bar. But in, in the lab, you can have, uh, you know, the left part and so on, or whatever layout you like. And then uh, in, in this uh, <coughs> route, we will uh, put uh, the layout, okay? So like a, 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 um, a structure where we can put our actual content, it is defined in the more specific routes, so the nested routes, okay? Let's try to follow this approach, okay? So this is not wrong. It's a bit different from what we implement now. It's something that you can experiment with. And sometimes if you have uh, like two routes, probably, I mean, there's no need to complicate things too much, okay? If you have many routes and you would like to have the same layout, it's probably better to have the nested routes, okay? So let's go back. Uh, let me see if we can do it uh, fast, yeah. So, <coughs> I use uh, this uh, uh, parent route with this component layout, okay? <coughs> and then 
I will have uh, route inside, the, the add, the edit with the answer ID, which is what I wrote before, right? Slash add, slash edit, okay? Um, I would probably be better not to use the relative, no, the absolute, but the relative. So it's clear that this gets concatenated with the rest inside, which is nested, okay? It will be slash add, slash edit, okay? Slash answer ID. And then we have a slash and nothing else, so the index route, which is what is shown uh, when there is nothing else except the the route of the parent, so the slash, okay? So in one case, the slash, as we were used to do, there's the answer route, we still have to write it, but basically that's a table, okay? And in the other case, we have the form route, that is basically something that shows the form. In one case, it's empty, in the other case, it's already filled with the answer, okay? Um, and then you can also have the a default route, okay? So the route that you use uh, to see, to say, I mean, there's nothing that matches our route, okay? So in short, it's uh, like a page that says, uh, uh, route not found, uh, go back home uh, to the home route and so on, okay? Uh, just to see a complete example, okay? So let's start to well, implement the first one, okay? So I'm commenting the rest, not to delete them because uh, otherwise it gets a bit uh, messy. Okay. So I need the layout. What's the layout? Well, actually the layout was this stuff that I didn't know, okay? Actually, that's a structure, right? So layout, uh, layout, layout. Okay, and what do I put in the layout? Remember the slides. In the layout, I put the outlet where there's uh, some, something that should change depending on the route, okay? And what is should change? I mean, the header and footer can stay like that. You have the left uh, uh, navigation uh, menu and so on. It can stay like that. Here we put the outlet, okay, slash. Of course, it doesn't exist, remember, you need to import it, okay? If you don't do the import, uh, an error will appear in the console, in JavaScript console in the browser, okay? When, when you run the, the code, outlet. But now the, it, we are full of errors because we, don't, we didn't finish, uh, you know, setting up the route, so there's no point in testing that. Okay, so that's the lay layout with the outlet, and the, la the outlet we render the answer route, okay? The answer route is not yet present, okay? I call it route just to remember the fact that it is a component that I put in a route, okay? I could put uh, main uh, here directly, I think, but I mean it's more convenient uh, uh, if we write component like uh, something route or route something and so on, just for us, for the developer, to remember that this is the component that has been used in the route, okay? Um, what did I put in the, in the layout here? Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's correct, okay. Okay. So basically, the answer route is uh, what, remember, it was main here, right? Yeah, actually, this is the answer route. Okay. So let's say former main component. Former main component. I'm just refactoring components a little bit, okay? That's exactly what you need to do next Tuesday in the lab. And uh, so, just be careful because here we had the state inside. It was the application state, okay? 
We can forget about those states because uh, we say that this will be states uh, kept into the URL. But what about the first one, the answers? Okay? The answers should move in a place which is accessible by the whole application. Okay? So we need to move this state in another place. So let's cut and move it. Well, when you, when you don't know where to put stuff, I mean, up is the place, <laughs> okay? It's not uncommon to see a lot of states uh, in up at the exam. That's because it, it, you need to have states in a place where uh, uh, all the children component can access it, okay? You can receive it to pro through props or can access, modify it uh, through callbacks. And the state has to be in the root of this tree, okay? And sometimes the root is simply the up, so the, the, the top level root of the tree, okay? So this state has been moved uh, up into up, okay? Fine. Um, I think it should already work. No. Uh, auto. Question, answer list. The answer list is answer. So, yeah, let's try. Uh, NPM, I, I saved the file. Yes. NPM run dev. Okay. Okay. Let's try to open and let's see if it works. No, it doesn't work. Well, actually, there was another one open, sorry. Yeah, when things like this happen, just be careful. You know, I had the two terminals open, right? Uh, let's quit. There's another one running, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't go to... What is the other one running? It's too big, I think. No? Terminal? Ah, stop the jobs. Well, need to know a little bit of, uh, yeah. I think I, I simply stopped the, the, the job, uh, so the, the, the web server running with control Z. The Z, the Z, okay, control Z, control Z, Z the letter, stops uh, the current job in the terminal, okay? And I, I press the control Z, you know, to undo something in, in, the, in the main window, but I was in the terminal, okay? That's what, that's what happened. In case something happens like this, just call us in the lab, okay? Or if you are alone, I mean, either you discover how to solve it or just close stuff and open stuff, <laughs> okay? First, let me start, okay. It starts on the, on the usual port, okay? Nothing is rendered, I don't know why. Let's have a look at the console. Okay, always open the console. Okay, both answer is not defined and uh, up component. So actually, yeah, I need to have these functions as well. So where are these functions? Yeah, I need to move all these functions. All the functions go to up, control Z, the control X, so just cut and paste, okay? Save. Let's see if something renders. Default route is not defined. Yes, oh, sorry, that's a question. If we insert an nested root inside the one root, is it needed, uh, is it mandatory to use other outlet? Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. If you add the nested root, uh, the root will not render. I mean, we render, but it doesn't show anywhere. <laughs> so it will show only in the place where you put outlet. Because otherwise it wouldn't have a position where to... Yeah, where to put the component in the DOM. Exactly, that's the point. That's why in the slides we say the... Uh, um, no, where was it? Uh, yeah, if you forget outlet, it will not display. <laughs> But you will, uh, <laughs> you, you will uh, understand the, the problem because uh, things will not show up, okay? Yes, so outlet is mandatory if you have nested routes. 
to show something, of course. So we don't have this default route. So let's define it uh, somewhere. I don't know where, where did I put it? Default, default route. Yeah, uh, let's let's copy again. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, default route. Okay, you can put whatever you want in the default route. I mean, just uh, some text. That's enough. I mean, well, a tag like a paragraph and some text because you need to have a, a JSX element. Okay. Or, or something more complex, put whatever you want. I mean, uh, we are not supposed to use uh, this, uh, this stuff, okay? Just to show you something when it doesn't render. So let's reload. Okay, still vo vote answer is not defined, 67, vote answer. Okay, now everything is passed as prop, okay? Props. This is the answer route, okay? Yeah. Don't be tempted to put everything into a context. I know we saw the context, but this is not the, <laughs> the way the context should be used, okay? Context should be used only for things that are really global. Okay, uh, let's go back and see what's the new error. Show form is not defined, it's the old state, right? So let's see where it is, up 75. So show form, that is show form and so on. This is the answer route. So actually the answer route shouldn't care about the showing the form, okay? Uh, so, we can simply delete this stuff, okay? Of course, we should keep it somewhere because uh, we need to have a button at a certain point uh, to, to add, okay? But it's just a button, okay? So, we will rewrite it. So, this, this appears. This is the answer route. It's not a form route, okay? Let's go back and see. Okay. Good. So that's the first working prototype, okay? There's just one route that is working, that is the slash. But now it's working with the router, okay? And also, actually, there are two, because there's also the default router, the one that catches anything, right? So if you write anything, okay? Uh, we go to the default route and probably, yeah, we forgot something. Link is not defined, okay? Because in the default route, I put a link to go back to slash, okay? But link has to be imported. It's another element of the route, of the router. Link, save, okay? Yeah, no data here. It's not a valid page. Please go back to the main page. This cannot be a anchor, a selfie, because it reloads the application. In this case, it doesn't matter that much because uh, if we would like have no access, if uh, you know the route is not uh, included in the browser router, well, I don't like the, this kind of solution. But in this case, the pra in practice, it doesn't really matter. Okay, don't do it the exam, please. But I mean, this is uh, the only case where it's probably reloading the application makes sense. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, since we are handling stuff with the browser router, I mean, let's try not to do this thing any, uh, at any time, okay? So, let's go back to the main page, and we go back to the main page with the router. We didn't reload the application, okay? The error is just old, okay? We can delete it. So, uh, let's say again. Okay, you see no errors, but this is a link created by the route, and we go back to the main page, okay? And now, and now we need to do the rest, okay? And the rest, of course, is a bit more complex in the sense that, of course, it needs, you need to think a little bit more, okay? This is just uh, transforming the basic uh, first page in a route, okay? Let's go back 
and uh, create a second route. So we have uh, a path add, okay? Let's do the add, that is a simpler one. So let's move the comment. Oops, and move one line below. Uh, no. Okay, well, Visual Studio Code is not helping that much, but anyway, <coughs> fine, okay? So root path add element, form root. I need to create this form root. I mean, this form root is just a component, and I create a component in the middle between what I would like to show and the router, just because in case I need some formatting or stuff, I can put it there, okay? So it's more convenient than writing stuff here. Okay, so form route, let's try to write a component to form route. Uh, let's put it here, for function, form route props, okay, return. And, well, I should return the answer, uh, the, yeah, the form basically, right, uh, form. Uh, I put it into another place. Well, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can put it wherever you want, in any file you want, okay? The important thing is that if it's not there, you import it, okay? So let me go to the other file. Yeah, form out. Return, I mean, the answer form, right? Answer form. And... Uh, uh, and we need to understand what is needed by the answer form. We'll try to recycle the old component. The answer form is already there. Uh, so the answer form needs an answer. No, this is the answer row. The answer table, the answer, oh sorry, the, the form I wanted. Okay, the answer form. The answer form needs, uh, well, an edit object. We'll think about it later, but if it's not set, it's not a problem. And then it will need uh, it will need a, a few functions, right? Like uh, add form, save as is the answer, okay? And uh, well, close form. And we will think in, mm, later what to do with the close form, and and that's all, more or less, okay? Let's try to do the modification and then we see errors and we will fix them, okay? Uh, so let's go back to uh, app answer form. So we uh, need an add answer, right? Okay. And the only way in which we can get it is g having a props. And then make sure you pass this prop, add answer, okay? Uh, let's see if we passed it. Let's go to the router. Yeah, add answer. We passed uh, the add answer. Okay? Fine. Good. So we can get the prop and pass uh, the prop again. Okay? And then let's see if things work, more or less. Well, where's the add button? Well, actually, <laughs> I, ne I need the add button. Okay? So actually, uh, I for uh, I deleted one uh, uh, thing that I shouldn't delete, right? So where's the add button? It was the button that was uh, shown before, right? No, the other file. Button. I'm just checking the code here because uh, I would like to do more or less the same. So when I go back to the office, I push the whole solution if we don't finish, okay? So that's in the answer table, right? It was the next row that we deleted before. Row call, that's the bootstrap uh, style, uh, layout, let's say. And then the button, right? Button, add, right? So there's a button, but how can we make this button work now? 
what's this button now? It used to be set state show form, right? But the show form doesn't exist anymore. Now the show form is the new URL. I should go to the new URL, which is slash add. Okay? So I, how can I move to another URL? Well, just two ways. Either I have an on click and you may put navigate slash add. That's an option. I would like to show you another one. But the, the first one is valid, okay? Link, you have the link. You can make a link that is actually a button, okay? Slash link, okay? And there's the attribute to slash add, okay? So it's a link which is represented by a button. So if you remove button, there will be an add, a text uh, which is clickable, okay? Uh, but if you put a button, it will be rendered as a button. If you click add now, no, it doesn't work. No, I, I did I save, yes. Okay, let's reload the application, should work. Yeah, you see in the, in, here, in, it's small, but uh, you should see that uh, it's a link. Then you click it, okay? And you move to slash add. I know it's, uh, it's gray, it's small, but there's slash add in the URL, okay? And the application didn't reload. It's the uh, router of React that moved uh, my view to the new route, okay? And moving to the new route means that uh, the old component is not rendered anymore. So the answer route is not rendered anymore and the form route is rendered instead of the answer route, okay? So, I mean, more or less, it should be easy, right? Um, what are we missing now? Well, there's, there's a cancel button. You remember the cancel button was uh, close form. There's no close form anymore. The cancel button is return to slash now because there's no show form. The show form was do I show the slash or do I show something else? So the form. And so the cancel button can be modified in the same way, okay? The, we are in the form here, okay? Uh, cancel, let me try this, uh, this option which I told you before, okay? On click, props, close form, no. On click, uh, navigate, uh, slash, okay? But navigate, where is navigate? No, this is lowercase. Navigate should be created through the hook, const navigate, use navigate, okay? Oh, nice. This time it guessed correctly. Just navigate, it's in the React router DOM, so it needs to be imported, okay? But you can, you can use it later on the on click, okay? It's navigate slash. This is a normal event handler. Let's see if it works. So let's reload the application, okay? Uh, well, actually I reloaded add, I don't like it. Let's reload the initial application, add, and then cancel, Click, we go back, okay? What's the difference? One is an on-click uh, handler, so you don't see the, the link here, because there's no link. It's JavaScript, okay? It's an handler, an event handler. But, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can implement things as you like, okay? If you like the links, use the links. Uh, maybe links are a bit uh, better for debugging because you see, you know, wh wh what the application is going to do if you click, okay? That's the only difference, okay? But, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. And so, uh, does the save uh, work? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. We should try. Well, before trying, 
Let's make sure we passed the prop add answer, so probably it should work. I'm not sure. <laughs> Until we, we try, I'm never sure. Okay? Let's try something to add something. Okay? Let's add. Okay? Well, what did, what did we forget? Well, we need to go back to the slash to see the list, right? And probably there are also something that has been called that, that is not defined, like a set show form, right? So, just for curiosity, okay, if you go to the uh, app, you see the answer? No, it failed, okay. Uh, there's no new answer. Okay? That's, oh, do, do you know why there's no answer? There's the, the additional answer has not been set yet. Does anybody know why? Come on. Now, I know it's a difficult question, okay? But uh, at least we understand something important of React, yes? If you uh, open the form, yeah. the yeah. No, we are not going to the URL because we didn't say to go to the URL. That's a problem. Yeah, that's probably the default uh, behavior. When you press a button, there's no, you know. <laughs> I mean, no, actually, we don't go. Actually, we simply don't move. We don't go to a new URL, sorry. Yeah, because this is not a, a submit button. No, actually it is, right? Yeah, but we did we prevent the fault. So we are executing the event handler. We are arriving at this point. We set the add answer. Okay, we, we called the add answer. And then we called the close form. We crashed JavaScript inside this application. Okay, that's why it should, it should never crash in your application at the exam. Because basically it stops doing everything, including React. Okay? And why the answer is not appearing? Because the add answer does the following thing. Set answers and so on. The set answer is the way in which you set a state in React. Remember, this is asynchronous. It doesn't happen immediately. It is scheduled by React for later update. But in the meanwhile, JavaScript crashed, and so you don't have the update. Okay? It crashed the inside the component, I mean. Okay? So that's why you don't have the app. So let's say we have an example that showed us, uh, by chance, I must admit, that the update of the state in React is asynchronous. Okay? It doesn't happen immediately. If we wrote, uh, which is wrong, of course, answer list equal to. Uh, a new array with a new element, this would happen synchronously, but this set answer happens asynchronously, okay? And that's the only way in which we should update the state in React, okay? Well, this is just a, 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 a parenthesis, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, just uh, a question that happened to my mind now. Um, just to show something in, in which we happen to run uh, by chance. But as your colleague was saying, you know, what, what should happen when we add the answer? We should go back to slash, right? Otherwise, we stay on slash add. So navigate, add. There's no state we should uh, set in terms of React state. It's just, you know, go back. Oh, no, not add, sorry. Slash. Go back to slash. OK? So let's reload the application. Uh, Okay. Um, so add, put something, click add. Ah, oh, okay. yes. Set show form. Uh, one one nine up. There's still one set show form. Yeah. Actually, I did it twice. I did once in the form and <laughs> once here. Well, actually. The final value is always it's the same, so it's uh, uh, false and false, so it didn't create problem, but it was 
one of them was useless, okay? So, try again, Oops, add. So, let's start from the slash, add. Okay, now, no, oops, didn't add. No, it didn't add, why? Oh. So maybe the, the previous explanation was wrong, sorry. But the concept was right, okay? Let's check what's wrong. I mean, uh, there's a submit button. So it's a submit button. From say the save ad, uh, we should have this information here. And the submit, let's uncomment this. Submit was clicked, and then let me check everything is fine and props edit object, uh, props edit answer it should work, right? Just to debug a little bit, uh, and it's useful for you as well, okay? When I, when I would like to debug the content of an object, of course you can do console log, uh, okay, E, fine. Otherwise, you, uh, you stringify it as a JSON object, and it's easier sometimes to see the content, okay? Let me just check what's happening, okay? So submit was clicked, that's the object. So I'm missing something. So maybe the, the function it's not the function. No, the function should be defined. Let's have a look at the inspector. Um, so that's yeah. The edit object. The edit object. Yeah, it should be undefined, right? Hopefully. <laughs> let's let's do a console log of the edit object. Edit object. Okay. Try again. Well, probably I can leave it empty, right? So let's have a look in the console. That's undefined. So, so our function should work. Why? Sh why it doesn't work? I mean, I, I commented here the set for soul, so the code was executing here. Answer list. That's the answer list. Set answers, the answers is here. If anybody has a, a clue, it's, it's time to, to um, add. Yeah. Slash layout, answer root, question, answer list, answer should be. Should be the new answer, right? That's not. Uh, am I? Yes, am I modifying the correct? Okay. So the components. Uh, that's a state. That's the. The form root should receive the add answer. The answer form has the add answer. The form submit and the submit. I don't know what's wrong. Um, Oh, up as a fifth element, right? So the element is there. Just doesn't get rendered by, for some reason. So ID5, okay. ID4, three, two, one. Why doesn't get rendered? Let's have a look at the keys. One, two, three, four. No, nothing is. 
So it's probably rendering something different. Uh, up. So this the the answer route. List of answers, answers. Answers. You see answers here? That's wrong. No, that's the answer route, right? Yeah. But this is this way. Is there a state here if we moved it to, to up? Right? We have two states called answers, and set answers. That's actually something that uh, happens to you in the lab as well. Okay? You move the state and you forget to delete the old one, right? Remove the old one. Save. Okay? Now it will at least say something in JavaScript, right? So, you see? Answer is not defined. Why? Because in app 70, this should be props answer. But it didn't give me an error before because I had the duplicate state. That's the problem of duplicate states. Okay? Never, never use duplicate state. Otherwise, you run into these problems. Okay? Sorry for that. It took a while to, to figure out. Okay? Now, there, there probably is something you know, wrong with the name, but uh, I mean, props list of answers. Prop list of answers, I think. That's uh, answer route. Answer list. Answer list. Okay. Let's try. Oh, the fifth answer is there. Okay, it's empty in the names and don't, don't in the in the text and so on, but it works. So let's say by chance uh, we we even experienced a, a, a more subtle error. That is the duplicate state. Just try to have the state in a single place. Otherwise, you forget to update the state. And by the way, by, uh, at the moment, you don't have a way to update one state on, on the basis of another one. That will be next time when we talk about uh, use effect. Okay? And let's say, since we are running more or less out of time, <laughs> okay, as usual, uh, I will leave the implementation of the edit. Uh, um, for either next time or I will uh, commit the solution. Okay, probably we will commit the solution and maybe I'll discuss briefly next time. Okay, but you see that the the concept is mostly the same. What's the difference is that in the form route, you should check if in the route there's the answer ID parameter. If there is, you get you go and extract. Uh, the answer from the answer list, and you initialize the state of the form with this answer uh, that you extracted from the answer list. The rest is the same. It's more or less done, OK? Because we are reusing the same components. It's not forbidden to reuse the same components. Actually, components are there to be reused, OK? <laughs> when you can, please reuse the component. If it's really different, OK, write a new component. But if they do more or less the same, it's just the initialization, the changes, and so on, try to reuse the component. Also for the exam, sometimes we do, uh, we have different views that, have, that basically show the same stuff, but one is read-only, one is read-write, so you can change things and so on. We don't expect you to write tons of code. We just expect you to use a component and maybe have a prop that says it can be written or not, it's read only or not, and stuff like that, okay? Just organize the code in a su suitable way, okay? Uh, so, uh, since there are just five minutes left, I, I will uh, push the full solution, okay? When I'm back in the office, like half an hour, just to set up everything. And uh, we will have a short look next time, Monday, okay? just to make sure everything has understood the routes. Routes are very important. We expect you have routes in the solution that you submit at the exam, okay? It's not mandatory, but you see that, uh, no, if you don't have uh, uh, this, uh, this approach, it means that your application is full of these states, which will 
get messy very quickly for a bigger application, okay? So use routes because, uh, I mean, uh, it's something not so difficult to, you, to use as you see, as you could see, okay? And also explains how your application works. Okay, if there are no questions, I would say that's all for this week, <laughs> okay? And we'll meet on Monday, room R4, okay? Thank you. See you.